right, I've got a couple of jerk baits here that we're gonna do in crawl pattern real quick. This is your two for Tuesday. Uh, two patterns for crawls, and we're gonna speed style do this, although I am gonna talk through it. These are trolling jerk baits. They are 100 double D, which means they're deep divers from Dinger. Brian over at Dinger provides some of the best blanks on the market today. You can catch him at dingerbaits.com or find him on Facebook. I think he's on Instagram as well, Dinger Baits. So check him out. These are going up to the Great Lakes. One of my tournament anglers that with her brother does a lot of walleye trawling, trolling and things of that nature. Big walleye heads. That's what these are getting transformed into. And I'm pretty excited about it. I always love doing good stuff for her. Tina, these are coming out to you. We're getting started on that. I also have some other stuff that's in the pipe. This is going to be a full-blown spray session on these ruckuses. But for the two for Tuesday, we're going to concentrate on these two into crawl patterns. So I have got just a little bit of Createx Maui Blue with a, a white prime. It's just an opaque white prime. The thing about white primes is that they're a little bit chalky, so sometimes I'll mix them up. Uh, this is what I'm using today. It is part Createx, part Wicked, and part Jacquard. Acid-free permanent, opaque white. I find that if I do, uh, it's basically one part, one part, one part to form the three. So a third, third, third. I find that uh, when I mix them together for the white primer, I just get a much smoother run out of my airbrush. I have got a little bit of jet black detail sitting here in the chamber. And this is a crawl run, so we're gonna go relatively quick. This should be a fairly fast video. Make sure that my pressure's down. I keep, uh, when I'm doing base crawl on a stencil, this is a hand cut stencil, same one I've been using for a while kind of a signature stencil. Um, I can usually run through this pretty quick. And I'll get the, uh, the hood of this crawl helmet on first. And basically all I'm doing is just running this against this part of the stencil here. So it's not a whole lot of overspray. And then I'll come back to the other part, which is this right here. And from the back to the front, just to refresh you guys, if it's been a while since you've done a crawl, or if you're new to making crawl patterns, I always come back down towards the head. Try and get as many segments as I think is applicable for the size of the... Now, a lot of people ask me, it's the most common question I get asked all the time with jerk baits, why are you putting crawl patterns on jerk baits? Uh, there's a lot of definition and lining on these. And actually, I'm gonna leave that go. Um, so on walleye patterns, it really isn't as critical. I don't think that they care that it's a crawl pattern. They're going after bright colors, light colors, anything that can key them into it. And um, my walleye guys keep coming back to these crawl patterns because for some reason, fish really like it. The walleye really key into it. So if it's gonna make them happy, I will paint whatever they want. As long as they get those big strikes. So normally when I'm doing a run, I'll do it one of two ways. This way, I can just kind of do both sides at the same time. So we're kind of doing some tips and tricks here as well, which makes this a true two for Tuesday. Now, this time, I'm gonna use this little piece right here. We'll bring that into the light. And we'll complete the helmet on the crawl on, on both of these patterns. down on it. Now I did reference check 
my sound yesterday when I did the first spray session and most of you guys said that the fan here behind me is tolerable so we're gonna stay consistent with that I am and I definitely want to keep this fan going while I'm spraying especially while I'm speaking to you guys I need to have this sucking the, uh, the bad air out of the room as we go along we're gonna flip this over to this side do the same thing just run that helmet generally look like they have armor on their body so we try and match that up while we're stenciling the very best that we can now while we're on this I might as well go ahead and work this out run this stencil down the side here and this is where we'll finish two at a time you can see it's getting that really good muted detail you want to spray light enough to where you're not just dumping a bunch of black paint on there you want it to act more as shading and less as a defined line at least that works for me. Might be something different for you. But what I can do is just show you how I do it. And then take whatever knowledge you can apply to your manner of spraying and do it your way. There are lots and lots and lots of really kick-ass crawl patterns out there. And I am a big fan of all you guys' work. Whether you're beginners or intermediates, it's always rewarding for me to get those Instagram pictures and videos. I get lots of them from you guys. And it just makes me happy. You guys are trying different stuff. The best recommendations that I can make for you guys is to just to think outside of your comfort zone. Work outside of your comfort zone. If you kind of get caught, sorry, I know that was probably really noisy. I had to adjust the camera down so that you guys can actually see what I'm doing. I'm realizing that when my camera goes off, there we go. Hopefully you guys are in frame. We'll know when I edit. Um, but when you guys are trying new stuff out, that's really when you'll kind of get off of that plateau and become the airbrush artist you were meant to be. And it's just really humbling to see that. And to know that there are thousands of you out there that watch what I'm teaching. And it just means a lot. And if I don't thank you enough, I need to thank you more because it's just, it's, it's really... It's awesome to see how creative you guys can be when you're working. So we're gonna, this is a little bit more shortened segment, which is fine. They don't all have to be cookie cutter. I actually like it when they're not. Just real light trigger spray. That's how you want to lay the pattern down. At least that's how I do it. Come down. And I'm about due for a new pattern. Cut some different stencils for 2021. I just use these until I can't use them anymore and then I cut new ones. That's usually the way it goes. Which is fine. Now 
this has got just a, we're going to do the underbelly on all four segments at once. That's why I haven't done the, the belly segments on the other ones yet because I just line them up and shoot them real quick. And I generally, and you guys might find this too, I generally have better control on one side than I do on the other. I feel like I'm shooting across my body on my weaker side, which is why I, I try and force myself to spray with both hands on occasion. And, and that kind of gets me out of my comfort zone. I'm right-handed, um, born and raised right-handed. Uh, but I fish goofy, I fish left-handed. My bait casters are all lefties. And my spinning reels are, I, I hold them in the right hand. Um, I throw right handed, catch left handed. That makes sense. And my ball glove is on my left hand. That's all. If I'm rambling, it's because it's Monday morning. Monday, Monday. There we go, a little coffee on the bench. You know it's not a good Monday morning with you guys without coffee. So, uh, Tyler, Bullshad Tyler is in the back of the house doing his thing with Bullshad Swim Baits. Him and Jess are here this morning. Mike has not gotten here as of yet, but he usually does a lot of office work at home. It's the, uh, the power of technology. So, I'm just kind of running this through, talking to you guys while I do it, putting these belly segments in. Nice, simple pattern. And the, uh, the rule of thumb here, folks, if you guys recall, I'm sure you guys have seen me do crawls before, although I don't do them as often anymore working with swim baits there's just not a whole lot of cause for craw so that's something I miss doing but uh, going back to the rule of thumb I'm not wandering too far here you want to spray more on the stencil itself and less onto the bait it just comes out a little cleaner that way you get less overspray get a real nice and it looks like you got shading on there and we can go back and do extra shading too for example if you wanted to put a little bit of shading in the middle here let's see if you guys can see this with me you just run that black up the middle of the belly and get that shading. And there you have it. You get a nice, cool, clean crawl. And the only other thing you want to check is to make sure that this line goes all the way up to this under uh, the segments on the side. And if, if you fall a little bit short, don't worry. You can just come back and pop that on with the same line you just made. Just put your stencil right back down on the same line. Follow through with it. I see one that's disconnected down here. As basic, you know, rule of thumb for tightening up your patterns. It's okay if it's a very faint line, but the line really should connect. Uh, unless you're going to put all kinds of shading on it. But usually for stuff like this, I'd rather see the line connect to the segment. So just tighten that up. But yeah, just, uh, I can't, it's been a while, you know, since I've kind of jumped over to the swim bait game, it's been a while since I've done stuff with blanks and I'm not 100% out of the blank business. I still have long time, long time clients that I'm gonna be catering to. Uh, Jekyll Bates is transforming as well, which is really cool. Um, it it kind of keeps you from getting stagnant. You don't want to get stagnant. 
but um, less blanks and more brand names and more innovative, creative type adventures. So that's pretty much it. Um, Brian's eyes come with these baits. Um, it's the way he gets them from the factory for him and it's the way he sells them which is another thing that I love about Brian. Some companies that uh, redistribute the blanks don't always redistribute the eyes. Brian is always good about making sure you have the right amount of eyes for the baits that you get. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is just a quick take on four out of 14 trolling patterns that uh, my friend Tina is going to be getting and fishing with on the Great Lakes once she goes through that hard water thaw. So thanks very much as always for watching, hanging out with me. If you have any questions, comments, keep at them. I am back to the point where I can answer you guys on a regular basis. Again, thank you so much for being a part of this channel. Love you all. Mean it. I will see you guys on the Ruckus River to Sea spray session tomorrow. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.